Welcome, welcome, welcome to Season 2, Episode 20 of ChrisCast. I'm so sorry for the interminable delay, but business has taken priority in the ChrisCast world. And I don't know if you know this, but I have a business, and I have a business partner, and my business partner, every summer, because he's a mensch and the best dad ever, is uh he always works with his wife uh Gretchen they work at a uh overnight summer camp in the in the Adirondacks or in the uh the hills of New York or something like that and um he's he's a pretty good partner during the summer during the camps but he is a lot out of pocket so he's there um and he does amazing work he, he's basically uh the manager of the camp but he also because he is a um a crossfit trainer and a uh, general um 300 bodied dude he also is responsible for the um the pt the physical training the uh body movement the exercising all that kind of stuff so he's basically a fancy schmancy pe teacher so while he does that while he's cheating with me with the camp cheating on me with the camp i'm cheating on him with upwork so in the future i will in fact talk more about my love affair with upwork but today I have a special, special thing for you, and it has to do with uh, complete serendipity, complete serendipity. Uh, You might not know this, but I am a podcasting, uh, I'm a consumer of podcasts, and I have a trillion podcasts that I've subscribed to on Podcast Addict on my uh, Galaxy Note Plus And there's a million podcasts, and I I join them indiscriminately. I will join any podcast that doesn't have to do with sport, sports. So anything that has to do with sports gets unsubscribed, but everything else, like I've got everything. I've got from arch conservative to to Antifa left to uh, Black Voices to uh, BBC, CBC, uh, Al Jazeera, like everything. Um, and, and I basically listen according to what's recently been downloaded. So even though there's 4,000 downloaded MP3s, uh, of various podcasts, I really only listen to, uh, the top a hundred per day that are, um, the latest and greatest. So if you haven't published in a while, I haven't heard you. Um, and I do say, um, a lot. So on that note, I was walking, I know I know exactly where it happened. I was leaving my building. I had my Pamu Slide Bluetooth earbuds in my head. And I was listening to the latest downloads. And up pop. Uh, so here's a background. After the break. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is Chris Cass, Season 2, Episode 20. My name is Chris Abraham, and this is my sporadic and periodic podcast. So, I'm leaving the building with my Pamu slides in my head, my Galaxy S20 Note Plus, and my app, which is Podcast Addict. And I am listening to one of thirty of four thousand downloaded episodes, but I only listen to the most recent. And up comes New Yorker, 
and I love the New Yorker. I started subscribing to the New Yorker. I begged my mom, started subscribing to the New Yorker when I was 13 in Hawaii and hoovered it up. I totally fell in love with the, um, with that cliche trope, which is the, um, intellectual, uh, patched elbowed, um, neurotic professor, uh, who lives in the tri-state area and who deals with his masculinity and his sexuality and the women around him and also is constantly blessed with more money that he never explains, right? So he talks about how suffering his life is, but his life is Upper West Side, Upper East Side Manhattan or, you know, anyway, you know the type. It's uh, it's um, totally Woody Allen fodder if you've watched any Woody Allen stuff. Um, anyway, love that stuff. And, and I've always held it to high regard. I haven't listened, I haven't watched, I haven't read it in the last, regularly in the last 10 years, um, I might get back to it. It's just a matter of time. I mean, it's really true that uh, New Yorkers do pile up. So here I am. On comes uh, the New Yorker Voices or New Yorker Podcast. And it is a, uh, it's going to be a live reading of a recent, uh, a recent short story written uh, for the latest episode of The New Yorker, it being a fiction focus, a, a the fiction edition of The New Yorker. And this is going to be a spoken word um, reading of this, of this, um, of this short story. And then the short story starts and it's called Satellites by Rebecca Curtis in featured fiction in The New Yorker. And I wrote a substack about it. I'm going to link it to you. But what I want to do is I want to an answer from the question, which is, why is Satellites by Rebecca Curtis featured fiction in The New Yorker? Uh, I'm going to read to you from my article, and that'll include excerpts and quotes. I'm not going to fake a voice, but please let me know after the break. I'm just going to go after the break. I'm just going to go right into reading you this substack article verbatim and i want you in the comments or via email or whatever at the end of the podcast you'll know how to contact me tell me whether this is good fiction and if it's good fiction is it good enough for the honestly you know the two best places for fiction in america in a popular periodical in a popular magazine are i assume the new yorker and the atlantic right nespa uh you know, you've got the Paris Review and you've got these other journals and poetry and writing journals and and uh, and and so forth. But uh, based on historical evidence, the and and popular fiction, right? Every romantic comedy about a writer is this this passionate desire to get something published in New Yorker, be it poetry or short stories, right? Nespa. Anyway, after this break, I will just launch right into my reading of this article. Mahalo. Why is Satellites by Rebecca Curtis Featured Fiction in The New Yorker? A Substack by Chris Abraham. ChrisA.substack.com Quotes from Satellites by Rebecca Curtis that make me wonder why this short story is featured in The New Yorker instead of in an adventure or romance novel from Gold Eagle or Harlequin. I'll let you be the judge. Satellites by Rebecca Curtis is so basic and seems to be a short story interpretation of an Instagram story, rife with brand names and wealth and buff dudes and ex-wives and tech money, hyper-fit nerd billionaire ex-bankers. It's got all of it in there. An opening sentence of a short story especially is supposed to be amazing. 
Here's the first paragraph. Be inspired. Insipid. Here we go. Quote, One day last July, my husband's friend, Tony Tarantino, a tall, good-looking, rib-eyed, rib and scotch-loving, thrice-divorced, AB-negative Trump enthusiast, drove up from Virginia Beach to the Jersey Shore to visit my husband, a retired banker, at his hulking nine-bedroom, eight-bath tutor in the town of Coda by the sea and after we'd all been chatting, sans masks, on the porch for a while, right after Tony enjoyed an organic, grass-fed marrow burger I'd picked up for him from Cave, the excellent local paleo restaurant, his cell phone rang. He said, hello, then frowned and hung up. He blushed as he placed his phone on the table next to his Mai Tai. Unquote. Does that sound like a featured fiction issue of The New Yorker or a Hallmark Channel fan fiction? I didn't need to scroll much further to find this. Quote, Tony's wife was in Virginia, in the house he had bought for her. She was new, his fourth, a curvy Irish redhead, 20 years his junior, junior named Sinead, a paramedic. They lived together for a number of years, and Sinead had been pushed for mar- pushing for marriage and babies. To please her, Tony had reluctantly consented to marriage. He loved her. More important, he said, they agreed philosophically, talked endlessly, and had fun in bed. She hadn't come to Coda because she was shy. She couldn't visit us, she said, because she'd never met us, unquote. One cheap way to write includes dropping brand names as shorthand for where someone is in their prestige, for where someone is in their prestige and taste. This is just lazy writing. Enjoy this paragraph. Quote, I carried lunch plates into the dark house, past the mahogany, the mahogany gargoyles, one male, one female, that leered from either side of the living room fireplace, past the arts and crafts grandfather clock, and the bookshelf stuffed with immense taupe colored Kelmscott press classics printed on vellum, into the kitchen where the wall beyond the copper bar was covered with framed ink drawings by F. R. Gruger, the illustrator who'd built and worked in the house of men and women ruined by lust, kneeling in thrall to ghosts, demons and succubi. Tony followed me into the kitchen and offered to help do the dishes. I refused because I planned to sneak off to the beach. Unquote. Now, here Rebecca Curtis downshifts into prime romance novel novel fetishism for a new class of people. If this is a new form of writing that has been influenced by Bravo and Instagram and YouTube unboxing and van life and the trope of the evil banker who is not a sex and drug hedonist, but a food foodinist who eschews all the trappings of a Chad for becoming the true Renaissance man quote, I like them both, but when two guys you've known each who've, who've known each other, uh, since age 13 get together, they yap, and I wanted to lie on the beach and absorb negative ions from the beach before the latest hurricane landed that afternoon. My husband and Tony were anxiety-ridden workaholics who'd focused from a young age on earning cash. Tony wanted enough for a good life, Connor enough to feel safe. They were 56 years old, though Connor looked 45 and Tony 35. They were meticulous, but owning to oversights, they each had five kids by four women. They were two nerds from New Hampshire. Unquote. Yeah, nerds from New Hampshire. That said, I do know someone exactly like that, but he's from Maine and he now lives in L.A. Okay, maybe I am reacting so badly to all of this because I recognize lots of men who are just like this, but it's so painful to watch it written into the world like this. Quote, 
My husband was short, broad-shouldered and muscular, with a handsome olive-tinted oval face, a huge nose like an ice scoop, and black eyes. Genetically, he was 60% Irish, 20% Syrian, 2% Jewish, and 18% English. But he identified as Dutch New Netherlandish. His ancestors, he told me, had founded America. He'd started working at age 12 as a farmhand and eventually acquired a Ph.D. in quantum physics from Harvard, then served for decades as the head quant as a world-renowned investment at a world-renowned investment bank. But he wasn't smart enough to be skeptical when go-go dancers said, Don't worry, I'm on the pill. Unquote. It's so materialistic. It's so completely superficial. The problem here is that this short story might surely turn the corner and become beautiful, profound, sublime, transcendent, and important. But it feels impossible to get there from the beginning. I discovered this story randomly because I am literally... I know how to use it, thank you. Subscribe to every single podcast ever podcasted. So I was excited to see that the next pod in my queue was from the New York... Uh, from the New Yorker, A2, Eustace. Here's some more. Tony was tall, tan, and broad-shouldered, with a shaved head, dimpled cheeks, a straight nose, and huge, long last brown eyes. He was half Jamaican and half Italian, but he identified, lately, as Italian. Ever since he'd arrived at Piscata, Takwa, Piscataqua High School in coastal New Hampshire in the 1970s, stick skinny with an afro, and sat at the nerd table with my husband during lunch. Females had asked to sit by him. The bakery girls who worked at De Moulas supermarket where Tony and Connor stocked dairy products always offered Tony free hot cross buns. <laughs> Tony and Connor co captain the Piscataqua High Chess Club, four members of the debate team six, and played D&D Weekly. Tony was opinionated but a people pleaser, and both he and Connor were hedonists. They were too nerdy to have sex, and they eschewed alcohol and drugs. But they worked 40 hours a week at Demula's supermarket to earn money and then travel to Asia. A grand gesture with a blue pagoda. Sorry, a grand structure with a blue pagoda in rye and gorged themselves on oriental feasts. That was the greatest pleasure they can imagine back then, riding bikes to Asia together and gluttoning upon Polynesian and Cantonese delights. After high school, Tony turned down a scholarship to the University of New Hampshire. He wanted to work. He did active duty in the Marines for eight years, then served in the Air National Guard for 20 while working as a cop. Now he collected his police pension and, for fun, drove a delivery truck. Unquote. Holy narrative exposition, Batman. I guess it's okay to objectify people now with great levels of detail, the kind one only finds in actual pulp fiction. A2, Tilly? I don't know if I can go on. I am out of juice. Please tell me if this heralded short story that just dropped in my favorite magazine of my entire young life, The New Yorker, gets any better. And good luck to Rebecca Curtis, who is extremely beautiful and, I am sure, extremely talented. I, too, blame COVID-19 for this short story. I assume Rebecca Curtis and all her editors were COVID drunk the entire time, and maybe this is the direct result of a Pfizer vaccination side effect. I surely might be mistaken. My taste in fiction might be entirely old-fashioned. If so, I might be an old. But I'm not a boomer. I'm only, still only 51. If you want to read this story, this short story, check it out. Uh, it is uh, in the fiction epi uh, issue, um, July 12th and 19th. So this fiction issue is extra thick. 
and so it spans two weeks. If you don't know, The New Yorker comes out weekly, and uh, it's fiction issue July 12th and 19th, 2021. Uh, it's called Satellites by Rebecca Curtis. Uh, came out online July 5th, 2021. And if you want to listen to the short story as uh, as read by her, it's uh, on, you can search for the writer's voice fiction from the magazine, Rebecca Curtis Reed Satellites with Deborah Treisman, uh, July 6, 2021. So as a result, uh, that is that. I will have links to both things in the show notes. So if you look at the show notes, I will copy and paste as much of this Substack article as I can in the show notes. And I will start it with links to the Substack. I will start it with links to the article and to uh, the um, spoken word. All right. We'll be right back uh, after these messages. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Season 2, episode 20 of Chris Cast. That's it. This one's pretty short. Um, I just needed to share that. I want... I'm already... When you search for satellites, Rebecca... Whatever her name is. Uh, when you search for um, satellites, Rebecca Curtis, or satellites, New Yorker, Rebecca Curtis, or just satellites, Rebecca Curtis, um, my... I cross-posted this on chrisabraham.com. Tell me if this is true. When you search for Satellites Rebecca Curtis on Google, uh, chrisabraham.com comes up like number three, number four, number five. Uh, Please let me know. Um, And I'm going to tell you how to contact me. So my name's Chris Abraham. I'm everywhere online, so I'm going to try to remember all the places. I'm at Chris Abraham on Twitter at Chris Abraham on Instagram, at Chris Abraham on YouTube. I am at Chris on No Agenda Social. If you are on Mastodon or the Fediverse, I'm at Chris at NoAgendaSocial.com. I'm also at Giravik.su, but I haven't really opened up that uh, instance yet. I'm still leery about... Uh, allowing people into my instance, but I might start promoting that. Um, I am on uh, Reddit, at um, which is uh, uh, slash you slash Chris Abraham. I'm very active there, believe it or not. Um, I am on TikTok, but I'm not a creator, but I'm Christopher Abraham. I believe Christopher Abraham or Christopher J. Abraham. Uh, you can find me there. There's only two videos of my fat bullet head. Um, you can email me at chris at abraham.su. You can call me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can also text it because I am, that's my actual cell phone, my mobile, my Hondi, as they say in Germany. Um... But if you call me without having a uh, pre-organized Calendly uh, scheduled, then I won't answer. It'll go to my Google Voice. It'll be transcribed and sent to me as an email. Uh, at Calendly, I am calendly.com slash Chris Abraham. You'll find several times a 15, a 30, and a 60 in there. Be judicious and generous and kind and don't over-schedule me or I will enforce a shorter conversation if you're fabulous you know that you can just text her or call me and i'll pick up but we need to have a previous relationship let's see what else um my company is garris corp g-e-r-r-i-s-c-o-r-p.com which is also g-e-r-r dot i-s and um there's other stuff I'm sure there's other stuff. Uh, I don't think so. On Tumblr, I'm chris-abraham.com. My home p- 
page is chrisabraham.com, which you can also get to by abraham.su. Um, let me explain those two super cool domains that I mentioned. Um, I love collecting um, rare domains. And when I discovered that the Soviet Union still had a TLD, a top-level domain, .su, .soviet Union, um, and there's only 100,000 registered SU domains, I realized that I can get any domain I want. Like, I've always wanted, since I was a wee lad, chris at abraham.com. But Abraham is a uh, a global um, uh, prophet, right? So that wasn't going to happen. But in the godless world of the Soviet Union, I was able to get abraham.su, A-B-R-A-H-A-M dot S-U, so now I'm Chris at Abraham.su. So I not only did I get close to what I wanted, but I'm giving the finger to all Americans who thought that really that really thought that the Soviet Union was an actual threat to America and now um, are afraid of Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. So having a controversial SU domain is actually an intentional um, act of uh, defiance. And then I wanted G-E-R-R-I-S dot com, Garris dot com. But uh, every year, the person who owns it wants more and more money for it. So I went around it and found an Icelandic uh, top-level domain and was able to register G-E-R-R dot I-S, which is awesome. So Chris at G-E-R-R-I-S, sorry, G Chris at G-E-R-R dot I-S is freaking rock star. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I would love to talk to you. I would love to chat with you. I'd love to engage with you. I'm on Twitter all the time. Um, you can comment in any of my uh, Instas, as they, as the kids say. And uh, tell me what you think about the pod. Oh, uh, and don't forget to subscribe and comment and review. These reviews are very important, right? So please review... Please give me stars. Please review. Uh, those are very important things. And I appreciate you. Talk to you soon. Mahalo Nui Loa. And uh, hasta la próxima. Mm -hmm.